Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here, and what I've got is I've got a prototype set up where I've got water running out of the end of the tube here. I've got the other end stuck down into the discharge side of the pump. I've kind of just got it improvised here, and I'll improve the design. But the uh, general concept here is to sh flow the water over the board as I pour the molten metal into the uh, pot of water there. And what I've got over here is I've got some, uh, let's see if I can get this adjusted. I've got some pure gold melted up in our crucible. And what I want to do is break it up into smaller pieces. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pour it into this tank of cold water. I've got some ice cubes in here floating around to cool the water off. Okay, here we go. I've got a face shield on. I've got gloves and my protective equipment on. What I'm going to do is take our crucible here, our furnace, with the molten gold in it. And we're going to pour the molten gold now on this piece of wood and form some shot of gold. We're going to test out our new design here of water. All right, that seems to have worked fairly well here. Uh, there's a close-up of the little spout of water I have pouring over the board. It kept the board from getting uh, burnt this time. And if you see here what I did, I took my little pump and I just put the discharge. I put I stuck a tube down inside the discharged and connected it with some uh, zip ties. And that was enough. There's enough pressure coming out of that pump to uh, create a little bit of a flow up here to keep the board cool as I poured the molten metal onto the board. And get our gold out of here. Here we go. Got it all out, and there's a site you don't get to see every day. It's about 15 troy ounces of pure gold formed into flakes. Just wanted to take a look at this gold uh, when we poured it in that water out there made some very interesting shapes when it hit the water and I was trying to make shot so I don't know what caused it to come out looking like this these are actually looking like flakes corn flakes so uh, these should dissolve in Oakaburija relatively easily. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer some of this gold now down into this two liter beaker. I'm not gonna do it all at once. This is about 15 troy ounces. And uh, there that should be enough to get us started. Now we're gonna go out and start dissolving this gold to repurify it. All right, what we're going to do is start out by uh, adding some hydrochloric acid to the gold. About, 
I'm gonna put about uh, fill it up to the 300 milliliter level. I believe that's probably about three or four troy ounces of gold in there. And the reason we're doing this is because uh, this gold was not high purity. It was about 99.5% purity. So we're gonna do a repurification here. And uh, every time we melt the gold, or dissolve it rather, and then re-precipitate it, it gets more pure and more pure each time that we do that. So now what I'm gonna do is start adding small doses of nitric acid here. I've already got the uh, hydrochloric in there just added sulfuric to take care of any lead that might be present and so I'm going to add some squirts of concentrated nitric acid here and we'll start redissolving this gold flakes that we created in our little uh, water pot earlier all right that's about 15 milliliters of nitric acid that should do it as far as getting us started here shake this up a little bit now what we'll do we'll put this up on the heat and start dissolving our gold for repurification Okay, we've been on about a half hour now and we've got some of the gold to go into solution I added about 15 more milliliters of nitric acid off camera so there's a total of 30 in there I'm adding some hydrochloric acid here just to make sure we stay hydrated and we don't stall Now I'm gonna add another couple of squirts of nitric acid here. Get an immediate reaction because that metal is hot in there. Plus I just added fresh hydrochloric acid. One other thing I'd like to look at over here, if you look down here, I've got a uh, small drain tube, and this thing is connected to the uh, ducting for the exhaust of my fan, and what happens if any rain comes down the stack, it collects in a little plenum up where the fan is, and then this tube right here is connected to a fitting up there it's just pressed on there and any moisture that makes it down the stack will come down this tube and collect in this little pan our solution back here has been boiling now for about an hour and a half no more fumes being produced. What I'm going to do is transfer the liquid now into a separate container over here. And we're going to uh, allow this to evaporate in this large container and get it evaporated down as low as we can go to reduce the volume of the liquid of the chloroauric acid solution. Add a few more crumbs or 
gold down here. Hydrochloric acid in here with the gold. Fill it up to about the 400 milliliter level. All right, now I'm going to add about, uh, let's see, how much is this? That's probably about 50 milliliters or so of nitric acid. We'll pour this right on in and let this react. This reaction's been on the heat now for about half an hour. I've got uh, 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I'm gonna add this in slowly and make sure that we've got plenty of fresh hydrochloric acid to complete this reaction. And before I forget, I'm going to add some more sulfuric acid here. Since I added fresh gold to this. That's reacting pretty good here. So what I'm going to do is grab a couple of chunks of this metal and add them into the reaction now so that I've got plenty of uh, excess metal in here to react with the fresh acids that I've just added. All right, this has been on boiling now for about an hour and a half. I've added most of the gold to that now. That's all I got left. And so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna check this. I've got some hydrochloric acid here, about 125 milliliters. I'll pour it in here, make sure we don't get a, uh, a uh, foaming reaction. What I'm trying to do here is make sure I've used up all of the available nitric in here. In this reaction, I poured 200 milliliters in earlier and I've just been letting it boil. So now we're gonna let the solution boil here. Once I get this solution boiling and there's no fumes being produced, I'm gonna transfer the solution into this beaker that I'm uh, heating up here. I'm gonna evaporate this down to a syrup I've got some solids forming in here. Uh, the gold looks like it's starting to crystallize out of solution, the chloroauric acid. Uh, and then we're gonna see if we can evaporate this all the way down to a syrup and then uh, add hydrochloric acid to expel all of the excess nitric, if it has any in it. It's been about a half hour since I last added any of the material to this. I did get all the additional metal put into the beaker now, so I've got all the metal in our reaction. What I'm gonna do here is transfer this uh, material, or the uh, liquid rather, out of this beaker over into it's kind of heavy, man. I better get me a pair of gloves here. All right, I'm gonna transfer this gold solution into this beaker 
so that we can evaporate this down. And while I've uh, got this solution over here in this separate beaker, notice I still got a bunch of metal in the bottom of this one. So now, right quick, let me add some acid here. Hydrochloric acid going in. Filled that to about 400 milliliter level. There should be about maybe five or six troy ounces of metal left in here. I put uh, 400 milliliters of hydrochloric. I'm going to go to about the 75 milliliter level, maybe 80 milliliter level here with nitric acid. I'm going to pour this right on in. And we'll let this continue to dissolve. This has been on boiling now for about a half hour since we did add more metal. I'm going to add a little bit more sulfuric acid here to take care of any lead that we might get in there. And now what I'm going to do is measure out a little bit more hydrochloric acid. I'm going to go with another 200 milliliters here. What happens is the nitric after we add the nitric acid, that's about 175 milliliters. After we add that nitric acid, all the available hydrochloric acid gets used up in here in the reaction. And so we've got to add more hydrochloric acid here to make sure that we don't have an excess of nitric in here with our gold because the hydrochloric will get consumed in the reaction. And then there's nothing with the nitric to combine with to form aqua regia. And we end up with an excess of nitric in our solution. So I'm going to let this come back to the boil and see if we can get rid of all the fume production here. I think we've got this uh, reaction up here complete. I am going to transfer the uh, dissolved gold out of this large beaker now. It's got just a few little pieces of gold left down on the bottom. Transfer this into this larger beaker over here so we can uh, continue our evaporation process. And as you can see, we just got a few little pieces of gold left in the bottom of the beaker. I'm going to save those for a future refining. I'm not going to continue to try to dissolve every bit of this. Uh, so I'm just going to rinse these off real well and save them. That's a little bit that we've got left. So now we've got 15 troy ounces in this large beaker over here. Okay, this is absolutely incredible. If you look down here, I've got that solution evaporated down to about 500 milliliters. There's a little bit of metallic gold kind of floating on the top right there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of junk on the inside of the beaker there. But I'm uh, in disbelief that I've got uh, almost 15 troy ounces of gold in just 500 milliliters of solution. What that means is I can take this gold in this uh, container right here and cool it off. Let's see if I can find that right there. A soda bottle holds 500 milliliters. So what I can do is take the 15 troy ounces of gold after it's cooled down and theoretically pour it into this soda bottle. That's crazy. 
right, the next step in this process is to uh, add some hydrochloric acid to try to drive off any excess nitric that might be in this solution. I don't expect to have any excess nitric uh, because I did incremental nitric dosing when I dissolved it and I was careful to make sure I didn't add too much nitric. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put a cover on there. We won't be able to tell if there's fumes when I add this hydrochloric acid unless I install that cover. So here we go. I'm going to shoot some hydrochloric acid in and then we're going to uh, reinstall the cover and watch and see what happens. Here we go. I don't see a whole bunch of fumes evolving. I'm going to squirt in another uh, dropper full of hydrochloric here. See if we can uh, detect any fumes forming. I don't see anything. I didn't see any fumes forming in there when I added that hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to pull it down off of the heat now and we're going to let this cool off a little bit and then I'm going to put some uh, ice in here if you look on the surface you can see some uh, metallic gold has come out of solution and is floating around on top of the solution it's been allowed to cool for about 20 minutes now and as you can see, I've got some metallic gold starting to come out of solution here. Uh, what I'm going to do is transfer this into this uh, larger container here. And then I've uh, chopped up some ice. And I'm going to add ice to this and try to cool this down. And then what we'll do... I'm out of my experience level, as usual, here. Uh, what we'll do once we get this cooled down, is I'm gonna run it through a filter, which means some of that metallic gold is gonna get filtered out. Capture it in the filter, and we'll keep it, of course. Well, here we go. We've got the solution cooled down. I'm going to pour it through this filter here. And we're going to uh, filter out any solids that is in our solution. Man, this thing feels real heavy, more so than if I had just water in it. It feels heavier than if there was just regular water in here. So here we go, we're gonna pour this highly concentrated gold solution, pull it through this filter. Some metallic gold forming on the bottom of the beaker. Wow. It's thicker than normal gold solutions that I'm used to working with. I'm looking at this and in my mind I'm going uh, kind of freaking out a little bit here I look at the volume of liquid I've got here and to think that there's 15 troy ounces of gold here I'm kind of thinking man uh, have I lost some metal somewhere again I am completely and utterly out of my experience level here that's metallic gold, man. Beautiful. Man, 
here's the gold sparkling in the filter there that looks pretty cool here's a look at those uh, gold crystals that have formed here kind of looks like uh, gold that's been refined in a litholytic gold refining cell very unusual crystals All right, I've got everything pulled through the filter that will go. What I'm gonna do is put the funnel over here into a uh, beaker I've got set aside for it, just to sit in. Now, what I'll do to capture the gold in this funnel here, I'm gonna add this filter back into this container and then we'll uh, just dissolve it. I've got a four liter beaker here. Here's our filtered solution. And lo and behold, I think I see some more metallic gold coming out of the solution on the bottom of here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add this in right now. Jeez. I do not like working with large quantities of gold and highly concentrated solutions I'm gonna tell you right now so now we've got our uh, gold in here gosh I spattered some back here working with a large quantity of gold is no fun no fun no fun all right here we go first spoon of sodium metabisulfite going in. Let's see what happens here. Wow. That's bizarre. All right, I'm just going to keep adding sodium metabisulfite here, spoons of it, until I get it all precipitated out. Here we go. highly concentrated solution of chloral auric acid. I got a piece of filter paper here. I'm gonna reach down in and get some of the solution on my filter paper. I'm gonna do a stannous chloride test here, see if we still got gold in solution. And as you can see by that stain, not very much, but we need to keep adding sodium metabisulfite to get the rest of the gold to drop out. All right, let's try to add a few more spoons of SMB try to get the rest of the gold to drop out here shouldn't take too much more to get it to all come out of solution now all right if I had to do this over again I would dilute the solution before I tried to precipitate it I've allowed this to settle overnight. I did hydrochloric acid rinses. This is water now that I'm pouring off. I'm gonna continue to rinse this real good with some uh, boiling tap water now. Now I'm gonna rinse the gold with some boiling tap water and I'll pour these rinses off into this uh, bucket I have up here 
Try to get all the chemicals rinsed off. Here we go. We're going to put a little bit of the gold in a freshly prepared melt dish here. Pour off some of this water first. And then we're going to take it over to the melt table. And we're going to melt us up some of this gold here. Let's take it over to the melt table. Make us a little bar out of this. Alright, here's our nice bar of pure gold. Put it down here in the water. And now what we'll do, got our melt dish here. Put some more gold in it, and now, now we're gonna pour it into the uh, bucket of water there and make some shot. Alright, let's see if we can get some gold in this thing. It's gonna still be hot here, so I gotta watch putting it in there. Or it'll try to spatter on me. Alright, I think that should do it. Pretty good charge of metal in the crucible there. Alright, let's transfer this over to the melt table now. And we'll start melting this charge. Here's our bar that we just melted. Pure gold. Looks real good. Nice and bright and shiny. Very nice.
right, I've got it all dried off. I've got a uh, container here zeroed out. Let's see what kind of weight we got. And we've got 11.3 troy ounces. And if we add this bar on, this came out of this batch. We've got 13.7 troy ounces. And out in the shop, in that beaker out there, is the uh, crystallized gold that I recovered out of the filter. Plus, there's a few crumbs left in the beaker. There's at least a single troy ounce of pure gold out there. So we've got a total of, we had 14.7 troy ounces of pure gold in solution in 500 milliliters. All right, some folks will be asking, why did he do this? What was the point of all this? And uh, what I wanted to do was repurify the metal. Here's a little bar that I poured before I started. The gold was in this form when I started, and I took some of it and uh, poured this bar. You see the surface there. It's kind of a little bit, got a little bit of a dull finish to it. And here's the bar that we poured just a few minutes ago. And you can see the difference in the surface of these two bars. This one's got some contamination. This one's got a little frosty spot right there. That's indicative of camp contamination of some sort, but... Uh, this is probably very close to three nines fine here. Anyway, you can tell visually the difference in purity between these two bars. This is before the refining, and this is the bar we poured after the refining. This will conclude this video. The point of this video was to see if I could get 15 troy ounces of pure gold in just 500 milliliters of solution and we did that if I had to do this again I would dilute the solution before I tried to precipitate gold does not like to precipitate from a concentrated solution and then uh, the other point that I was going to try to make here is uh, when I sell the gold to a refiner the guy I sell it to I like it in this form, so it's easier to divide it up when it's in this form. And then of course we got the uh, two bars. This is the bar that I melted before I started the video. And you can see on the surface there, it's got some contamination on it. It's a little bit like uh, frosty. And then this is the bar after the refining. And this bar is much cleaner. So we succeeded in cleaning the gold up with this refining and we succeeded and putting it into solution, 14.7 uh, troy ounces in just 500 milliliters of solution. All right, that'll conclude the video. Thank you for watching.